Welcome. HMOs, you've got one. What can you claim as an expense in your property business? Let's have a look today. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. So if like me, you have a HMO, you'll know that there is a lot of expenses involved in running a HMO. Now, that's not a negative because hopefully most of those expenses we can actually claim against our income to help reduce the tax bill that we will inevitably end up paying on that income. So what expenses can we claim? So let's just do a brief overview today of what expenses we can claim. Now, as usual, the key phrase here is wholly necessarily and exclusively for business purposes. So we do just need to make sure that we are only including things that are properly expenses within the business. But if we start with just some general ones, which hopefully will become very apparent why we can claim them, such as things like our water, our utilities, our gas, electricity expenses. These are all direct costs within the property that we can claim. Things like council tax, which if you are a professional or a family HMO, you may be claiming paying that expense. Whereas if you're a student, you're probably not paying any council tax. So it becomes slightly irrelevant. As a landlord, we'll have our landlord's insurance and any of the subscriptions that we may be paying for the house. So this may be broadband, it may be TV license, it may be Netflix, it may be other functions that we've decided to add in as added value into the property. And these are all allowable expenses as they are being utilized in the HMO. If you're anything like our business, we don't want to be managing directly our property business with our HMOs. So we have a letting agent and we've got letting agent fees which we pay as the rent is paid to us. And we also have fees when they are looking at getting new tenants in. As well as you may have, depending on the property, there may be some ground rent, there may be some service charges. And all of these expenses are directly allowable for the property as they're being incurred on that property. You may have some legal fees. If you're refinancing the project, then you may be incurring refinance costs, such as your legal fees, such as product fees, such as commissions, valuation fees, survey fees, all these different fees that they throw at us. All of those are allowable for tax purposes. So make sure you keep track of those and put them down with your business records. Other direct costs that you may be able to put through your business are things like your telephone costs. Now, if you're in a limited company, that telephone will need to be contracted to the limited company. So you just need to make sure that the contract's in the right name. But then you may also have stationery, you may have broadband costs again, which would need to just be in the company name if you are doing it through a company. And also things like printer costs, printing costs, these are all allowable on the basis you're keeping your paperwork all together and incurring some costs for stationery. If you're doing any advertising or any documenting of your projects, then these costs would also be allowable costs within the business. And that leads me on to training and subscriptions that you may be going for. So if you are doing any training costs, you would be able to claim anything that's new or developing existing skills. You could be going to networking. And again, this is all an allowable expense against your business income. And to get to some of these events, you'll probably be incurring mileage or public transport fees, maybe train or bus. These are all allowable expenses. If you're doing any overnight training or overnight tr trips to your buying area, then you may be able to claim mileage, hotel costs, subsistence for your trips. For some of these expenses, they are more allowable in a company than in your own name. Now, if you are in a company, you would be able to claim the mileage to go on buying trips and hotels and subsistence. However, if you are doing it in your own name, then some of those expenses aren't as easy to claim because you're only actually allowed to claim costs against properties that you actually already own. So therefore, this does kind of push towards a limited company for that sort of thing, but it doesn't mean you can't claim anything because if you are going on a buying trip and going to visit your own property potentially in the area, then I'd be suggesting claim the miles because you're doing it to go and visit your property. 
to go and do a drive by just to check it's still standing for an example um, as well as maybe going and viewing other properties within the area. One expense that I'd recommend claiming is the use of home allowance. Now this can be the flat rate fee which is an allowable expense within the business. No questions asked, you just claim the £6 per week in a limited company or there is a number of hours you work per month for an individual and on that basis you can claim a flat rate fee. Alternatively, you can apportion your household bills. However, that is a little more difficult and if there's not lots of additional expenses, it can be quite time consuming to find that you actually get to not particularly a better result. As a HMO landlord, you obviously have your license fees which you have to pay potentially every five years or more often depending on the area of the country that you live. So that is an allowable expense within your business. And with that, you may have to do other things such as electrical certificates, gas certificates, or even fire risk assessments. So all of these different expenses are in costs incurred for the property and you can set them off against the property income. As a HMO, you probably find, if anything like me, that every so often there are repairs in particular rooms, on the whole property in general. So any repairs are allowable for tax purposes. And the main thing for all of these types of expenses really is to just keep track of them in whatever accounting software you want to use, which check out the video on Excel and on accounting software and what accounting records you need to keep. Now the key thing is you keep the paperwork or you keep the phot photographic evidence or PDF evidence of your invoices so that if HMRC do come back and ask you any questions, you can provide a copy of the evidence and then hopefully they're satisfied and they can move on from any further questions. The key difference between a company and an individual is there are a few limitations on expenses that may be able to be claimed, but generally it shouldn't make too much of a difference with what you can claim, it's just a few bits, you may be more limited as an individual when you are growing your portfolio. The interest on your property on any mortgages that you may have is an allowable expense. However, this does fall within section 24 if you're an individual. So check out the video on section 24 if you're not sure what that means. And in a company, it's all fully allowable. It's just obviously at a lower tax rate, which is good from a tax paying point of view, but bad from a claiming the interest expense and getting the most tax relief but in a company you claim all of it. As an individual, there is a limitation under section 24 just to the basic rate band. Now, if you are doing renovation work, this is likely to be a capital expense. So check out the capital versus repairs, revenue repairs video, which goes into a little more detail on what is a revenue expense, what's a capital expense, just so you can understand what you can be claiming each tax year and what you may have to wait until you sell the property to get the capital gains tax relief available. The final thing to mention is about the domestic replacement relief. So this really means when you have something that breaks in the property, so let's look at a dishwasher or a washing machine, when you replace that, you'll be able to fully claim that relief on the new item that you've put in. So that as you replace it, you claim the whole amount, including any disposal costs or any installation costs to get that put in situ. This could be for beds, curtains, crockery, anything really that is treated as a domestic item. Now the key thing here just to be aware of is that you can only replace like with like. Now this isn't a problem if you're replacing a standard bed with a standard bed, but if you're replacing a standard boiler with an all singing or dancing boiler, you've got a slight issue. If, however, you're replacing something that's maybe old, so if, say, you've got a bed from, I don't know, the 50s, 60s, God forbid, and you're replacing it with a new modern bed, now, you might say, but you've improved the bed, you would argue you're bringing it up to modern standards. So there is a slight difference in whether you are bringing it up to modern standards, which is expected, or whether you're making an improvement. If you're making an improvement to the item that you already had in the house, then you can only actually claim the amount which is the equivalent to what it was there before. 
So it's just something to be aware of. For most landlords, that's not an issue because we're generally replacing like with like. It might just be a more modern version of the standard that we had in before which is just something really hopefully not too big an issue but something to be aware of in the back of your mind this covers the majority of the expenses that are really key that you should be claiming within your hmo business now if there are any expenses you think of that you're not sure whether you can claim it or not please do leave a comment in the box below and we can clarify any points that we haven't covered in the video today the key thing is to keep your records, whether it be paper or digital, we're obviously moving more to digital and check out the making tax digital video, which will just explain what is going to be happening for landlords going forward to make sure you're complying with the changes that are happening imminently. Hopefully today you've figured out what expenses you can be claiming in your HMO property business. If you aren't sure, then please do leave a comment in the box below and we'll figure out together exactly what you can and cannot be claiming. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. Let's make tax less taxing.